we're doing today. Uh, we got a set of Corvo seats, roll cage, harnesses, some pretty nice seat brackets to show you. Um, the whole reason I'm doing all this, I didn't really plan on putting race seats in this car ever, but after uh, autocrossing it this summer, you really could, uh, you could see in the videos, you know, you're moving around and I could feel myself digging in with my left leg really to, to try to hold myself in the seat. So I figured uh, it may be time. The car's getting to the point that I need to be strapped in a little better. It'll actually go fast enough to, to uh, dictate that. So that's what we're going to do. We'll uh, get on to work and show you how it looks. All right, so we got the cage painted up last night. We're installing it in the car this morning. Um, we got the strap across it here to help pull the bars in a little bit. Um, we're just going to set it in, mark where the back holes need to be for the bolts, and uh, bolt it in. All right, so we got our cage bolted down to our boxes. We had to fabricate these boxes into the chassis. Um, you want to be careful on the driver's side of the car because underneath this box run all your brake lines and your fuel lines, which uh, if you're not overly careful, you may start on fire. Not that we did or anything, but you could. All right, here's the scary part about this roll cage install. Our down tubes go into, bolt into the rear uh, fender wells, and that's right where the seat's at. So we've taken some measurements and basically we figured out where our roll bar is going to actually have to go through the seat. You see our pencil marks here. So on camera, you're going to get to see me cut up my nice leather seats. So here goes nothing. All right guys, so we got our, for our driver's side, we bought a uh, massive uh, seat bracket kit. He builds these kits. You basically have a bottom rail that bolts right in. Uh, you have all these different adjustments, front to back, side to side has a little bit of play. And you have these aluminum side mounts that will basically mount to the side of the seat and the side of this. Um, you can flip these back and forth and do different combinations. I've got mine offset as far to the transmission tunnel as I could because I was a, I had I've had it in here about a week and I've been playing with different positions of how I how I liked it. So I'm gonna offset it completely to the as much as I can to the transmission tunnel. Um, my setup that I'm using I'm 6'3 I've got mine as far back as it'll go and using the top and the middle hole which gives me a little bit of recline. I couldn't actually use this third hole because the way the seat was designed I wasn't able to get this this bolt in. So this is the massive brake kit. Um, my only complaint, it's a great thing, is that my only complaint is these holes could be a little bit further apart. Had to just to take a little bit of file and, and clean them up a little bit to get them to slide over the, the front studs, but that's just a little piddly thing. So all in all, I think it's worth the money. Uh, it took all of like 30 minutes to throw in this seat rather than having to build brackets and, and all that jazz. So we're gonna get these bolted up, get the seat in here and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, let's talk about safety here for a second. I see a lot of guys running these fixed back seats and harnesses and no roll bars. Um, in some situations, you can get away with that with your sanctioning body, but most actual sanctioned bodies want you to have a roll cage, and here's the reason why. This fixed back seat is not going to move in the case of a roll kit rollover, and if this roof collapse, you're harnessed in, and where's the roof going to go? Right on top of your head compress your spine and do whatever other terrible things it will to you. So that's why most sanctioned bodies want you to do a roll cage with fixed back seats and harnesses all at the same time. That way you get the full package rollover protection, um, you get held in your seat better, it's all around better for, for racing. Alright guys, so we talked about the rollover protection and why you should have harnesses and a cage at the same time. There's another tr another thing you need to know about when you mount your harnesses. There, guys also, I've seen these guys with five-point harnesses that take them straight down the back of the seat and mount them to the floor. And in the case of a crash, that actually compresses your spine too. So a lot of different companies have different angles and such, but like Schroth has a really good guide on how to mount, mount your harnesses if you do get harnesses. And they want you no more than 20 degrees off of your shoulder. Some other companies just tell you that they need to be slightly below horizontal off of your, your, seat, your seat holes or your shoulders. 
Another thing is when you mounted them to the floor, make sure you get some kind of reinforcement to go underneath it. Uh, we're just using great big fender washers. Um, maybe not the best thing, but I think it'll do just fine. Um, Corbo and other companies sell a reinforcement plate that has a nut built into it and everything. You could do go that route too. So here's the seat all mounted up. The harnesses we got the harnesses set up for for my for myself and um, that's what it all looks like. All right, guys. So we showed you the cage. We showed you the fixed back seat. The problem with all that is it kills your back seat typically. But I've got kids and I like to take them to school and they like to go for rides in the car. So. Um, I wanted to be able to keep my back seat, so we kind of devised a plan. First off, the fixed back seat, you can't fold it forward to get into the back seat. So, this is what we came up with. We've got our same side mount brackets like our, like our other seat has. We have a half inch rod that runs through this sleeve all the way across. We have an old door latch here that we can unlatch. The seat will fold forward. And it pops back down and latches in and just for extra safety so that in case you know when we go racing or whatnot um, we put a capture nut on the inside of this rail so we can bolt it in so it's just like our other side bolt it in and it'll be solid we won't have to work, have any worries so this is our uh, this is our plan to make the back seat for the seat to be able to get to the back seat the harness is a whole nother thing over here so what we came up with is we have a latch of sorts on one side and a hinge in the middle so the, the harness bar will just hinge out of the way. Kids can get in. It's kind of hard. I've been in and out of there a couple of times. It's kind of hard for an adult, but it'd be fine for some four and five year olds. So that'll latch up just like that for race day. Going to school, we leave it down. Kids can get in and out, no problem. We showed you that seat bracket. Here it is with the seat mounted to it. You come here a little closer, I'll show you. We got a pull right here, and then boom, she swings up out of the way. Kids can get in, latch her back in. She's pretty solid. That's pretty much just the seat flex there. So, really pleased with how this turned out. It's a pretty cool thing. Guys, we got her all installed, got everything bolted down. The seats, harnesses are all set. and. You can still actually still fit a human in the back seat. So we're gonna, you know, go test her out in a couple weeks and let you know how everything goes. So we will see you next time. Hey, Herb, you wanna come get help me out here? Herb, Herb, where are you going, Herb?